Uh, uh, we're very much a church community that believe that God wants um, us to be a church that plants churches. And so we, the Lord, it seems, has... Um, Another time I'll tell you about the circumstances, but the Lord, it seems, has opened up a way for us to plant a further church in Lim. changing, no one's going anywhere, this is what God has called us to do, God has called us to be here, that's what we feel, but at 6 o'clock every Sunday evening from the 5th of July, um, we're going to uh, gather in Lim, the URC church, next to the Sanctuary Cafe in Lim, they've made their building available to us every Sunday evening, I met their members last week, that's why I've not been able to tell you until this week, I met their members last week and they voted unanimously that we could use their building on a Sunday night. So the plan is that we're going to plant a gathering, and then from that we're going to build community, and we're going to reach out in mission. And we're going to have a week of prayer from Monday the 29th of June to, uh, to pray into that. Oh, we've already prayed about it, lots of us have prayed about this already. But from Monday the 29th we're going to have a week of prayer, and uh, we'll talk to you, you more about that. So pray with us, serve with us. And stand with us as we do that. If you've got a Bible, Acts chapter 8, I'm just going to read a short passage of scripture from this account of the early church 2,000 years ago. The backdrop to Acts is that Jesus has gone back to heaven, he's left his disciples with a great commission to preach the gospel to all creation, and uh, that great commission follows through to us today. And this story in Acts chapter 8. It's a story about a man meeting someone and that conversation ending in someone being baptised. Yeah. And the five people being baptised today, all of them will tell you that there is a moment when they had a conversation with someone that led them to Jesus, which resulted in them being baptised. People don't get baptised by accident. Like these people this morning, they're not turned up this morning and it's a surprise to them that they're going to be baptised. Because there's been a, God's been working in their lives over a period of time to bring them to this morning when they might be baptised in water. So the, the man who's a Christian in this story, as it were, is a man called Philip. And the person being baptised is an Ethiopian. Okay? So, uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. I'll tell you what, Pete, can you come and ring that? Is that alright? You've got a good version there. Yes, yeah, the Bible. That's right. If you do uh, <laughs> Acts 26 to the end, we've got a microphone. Hello. Yeah. Uh, now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in this chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they travelled on the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water, why shouldn't I be baptised? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, 
but he went on his way rejoicing. <laughs> Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and travelled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Great, thanks, mate. Okay, so this short account, it, it gives us a picture of someone being baptised back uh, 2,000 years ago in the early church. We as a church, we exist, first of all, to worship Jesus, but we exist to see people baptised, okay? If people aren't being baptised amongst us, then we are not fulfilling what God has called us to do as a local church. Jesus, he told us to make disciples, to baptise them, and to teach them. That's what our commission is. And this short passage, it reminds us of that. And as we look at this passage, I remind us this morning that this passage is very much set in the shadow of Pentecost. Pentecost happened in Acts chapter 2. It's the time where the 120 were waiting on God to fill them or to send the Holy Spirit to them. The Holy Spirit came, it filled them, they were filled with the Spirit. And from that point they went out and they preached the Gospel. And that's, that's why I believe Philip was in such a place, he was so full of the Holy Spirit that he was able to go and do what God or Jesus had told them to do, okay? Now this morning, I, I, I want all of us to begin to ask the Lord to increase the desire in us that we might see more people baptised. Yeah. I want baptisms to become a monthly occurrence amongst Life Church here in Warrington. I want it to be something that becomes part of us. And even as I've been preparing what I was going to share with you briefly this morning, there's a desire that grows in me to say, Lord, what should I be doing in order for people to be baptised? Because what we see in these verses we read together, that evangelism leads to baptism. That's what we see. So there are, there are three things that Philip did that we need to do as a church community to ensure that evangelism leads to baptism. The first thing, church this morning, we need to be listening. The whole reason why verse 37 happens, verse 37 is where the eunuch says, look, here is water, why shouldn't I be baptised? The whole reason why verse 37 happens is because verse 26 happens. And what happens in verse 26, the Bible says, now an angel of the Lord appeared um, to Philip and said, go south on the road, the desert road that leads down from Jerusalem to Gaza. You see, the Ethiopian eunuch that day, he would have never been baptised if Philip had not been listening to what God was saying. Because it was because Philip was listening to what God was saying that he was able to go to the place that God had told him to go to. Now, I believe it's possible for us, 2,000 years later, to hear those same voices and to go to places that we might be begin to be in a place to share with others about Jesus. So that's the first thing, we need to be a listening church. Remove every distraction in order that we can get to scenarios where verse 37 happens where people say, look, here is water, why shouldn't I be baptised? Moving swiftly on this morning because I haven't got time to preach at you. The second thing is obeying. First thing is listening. The second thing is obeying. The Bible says in verse 29, the Spirit told Peter, go to that chariot and stay near it. Okay, so first of all, God spoke to him and told him to go to the desert road. The second thing was that it was an obedience. Because the Spirit said to him, go next to that chariot and stand near it. Which would have been a very strange thing to do. I don't know if you've ever tried to stay near to something that's moving quickly. But obviously, in order to stay near to something moving quickly, you too need to move quickly. And so there was a degree of discomfort and sacrifice involved. But Philip did it because he wanted to be obedient to what God was saying. But God said, stay near it. So Philip went and he stood near it. And the stories of those being baptised is that there was a moment in time where someone came and stood near them in order to tell them about Jesus. Or in order to direct them and show them and point them towards Jesus. There's a guy being baptised this morning, his name's Howard. And uh, Howard's being baptised this morning because there was someone who went and stood near him. So I'm sorry, this is Howard's story, okay? My experience of church was many years ago. It was not a very good experience, which put me off. I mentioned to Linda that maybe we should look for a church near a home. And then while driving around Latchford, I'd seen a banner advertising Life Church. Her reply was, what banner? I said if she went there, 
I would also consider going. So Linda went one Sunday on her own and phoned me later to pick her up. When I met her, she said she was a, she said it was a fantastic place and they were having coffee and cake and asked me to come back with her. At first I said no because I had my shorts and t-shirt on and didn't think it was appropriate to tie but quickly informed that other people were dressed the same. So much my better wisdom decided to go back. Now the first person I met was Des. I will never forget his welcome and encouragement. Now what I understand is testimony about his experience of God's love. That was it. Other people actually came to talk to me. A big thing, as I'm quite shy. So the following Sunday, I went with Linda to a service and again was welcomed with open arms. And so a different style of service, one which I was comfortable with. We had a, we had a cafe church one Sunday and a guest speaker, Rod, was, was, who joined a prayer, said anybody who has never said that prayer, asking Jesus into their life, before I raise your hand. I raised my hand asking Jesus into my life. I have often joked saying all I did was raise my hand, but realised there's a lot more to it than that. Since that day I've been reading my Bible and attending groups, learning so much in a short time and getting to know Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. That event has added a completely new dimension to my life, o opened up new adventures to explore and seek God's will for my life, and made my our marriage stronger as we share our love for God together and each other in, in a new way. I'm pleased to know you, Lord Jesus, even if it's taken 64 years, and I'm also pleased to be part of this wonderful Life Church family. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Howard, uh, Des is going to read a short scripture and then we're going to pray for you. Okay. Well, reading the scripture today is quite simple because uh, the sh uh, scripture that Lucas shared and the whole story about the Ethiopian eunuch is what, uh, what Lucas shared today. So quite frankly, it's exactly the same bit of scripture. Verse 34, it says, And the eunuch asked Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet uh, say this, himself or another man? And Philip said, open his mouth, and at the beginning of this scripture, preach Jesus with him. Important to know that Jesus was preached. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? And then Philip said, if you believe with your heart, um, then you can be uh, baptized. And that's exactly where I'm going to stop at this point in time. I just want to share that the bits of obedience that I saw there was firstly the obedience of Philip, listening to God. And sometimes it's us who need to be obedient to God, listening to drawing somebody in like Howard. And the second thing was the obedience of the Ethiopian eunuch who said, here is water. I just heard Jesus preached. Howard has heard Jesus preached by Life Church. Not by me, by Life Church, by the lifestyles of the people in this church, the community that we become. And on that confession, he, uh, at Cafe Church, he made the decision to put his hand up and follow Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 Father, we give you thanks for Howard today, and we thank you, Lord, for his obedience in going into the water of baptism. And I ask you, Lord, just to bless him now in his life that follows. Amen. 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 Okay, all right, Howard, on your confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.